Welcome, everyone. My name is Jordan Bain. This podcast is called Unveiling. This is season two that we're starting off these last couple of episodes. And in this podcast, we're looking at the deeper mysteries of life and how they apply in a practical way to everyday living. So I'm a senior guide, ritual master, uh, healer, teacher, Kabbalah instructor in the Modern Mystery School. My guest today is Michaela Court. She lives in Phoenix, Arizona right now, and she is a senior uh, ritual master and healer and guide as well in the Mystery School. I met Michaela about 10, 12 years ago when I first stepped onto the Ritual Master path. And it's just, it's amazing to have you on. It's such an honor, Michaela. I know you do a ton of healing work and today we're gonna talk about healing. So if there's anything that you wanna add about yourself, I'd love to hear and we'll dive right in. I just feel really honored to be invited to talk about one of my favorite subjects that mm -hmm. uh, understanding, I've always been fascinated by healing. And so coming into the mystery school, that was, something I was always what the next healing is to understand ourselves better. So I'm mm -hmm. super excited to have this conversation with you and, and hopefully it's helpful to everyone else out there. Very cool. Likewise, me too. I know I, I just thought uh, of this series, sort of this mini series within season two of unveiling to talk about healing because, you know, you and I were talking before the show a few minutes ago and I was sharing that when I first came to the mystery school, I came from a lot of other uh, healing systems and spiritual mm -hmm. backgrounds prior to the Modern Mystery School. And when I came into the Mystery School, each of those systems had had their own language and lingo and how they talked about things. And I wasn't familiar with the language that we used in the Mystery School. So, you know, I did things like the life activation. I did the galactic activation. I did the empower thyself initiation. And then I learned about these things called like the King Solomon healing modalities. And I did those. Um, but it was all very foreign to me. And it, because of that foreignness, I think it kind of took me a while uh, of working with several different guides in the mystery school over many years to realize the kind of tools that were available to me mm -hmm. in my healing journey and realize how specific and how relevant those healing tools could be to something that I might be going through in my life. And I, I found uh, all through my journey as an initiate in the mystery school that there was always some kind of healing for my next step that mm -hmm. would support me in that next step. It would it never... You know, we always teach at, at the Healers Academy uh, in Mystery School, Healers mm -hmm. Academy 1 and 2. One of the first things we teach on day one is that, first of all, you can't heal anyone else. Right. You can only heal yourself, right? And mm -hmm. that this is this is the foundation stone of all understanding about healing is that all healing is self-healing. Um, and I, I knew that coming into the school, and it was a really good reminder when I, when I went to Healers Academy. I was like, yeah, because no one of all those other healing systems I studied, no one else had ever really said that which kind of blew my mind actually when I was in Healers Academy. And I've always found in the mystery school that there's, there's teachings that they blow our mind, but our heart says, I knew that. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, that I've never heard anyone say it like that, but I knew that in my heart. Oh, and, and, and every mean, single yeah. step. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I actually haven't heard the, heard you share that before, Jordan. And it's a, mm. it's like we have a similar background, right? I've been mm -hmm. in the healing arts since I knew I was raised in a Christian tradition, laying mm. on of hands and doing that. Mm -hmm. But every system that I came and was trained into in shamanism and in Wicca and, uh, you know, I was um, uh, a Reiki master before the school. I was a pranic healer and... Mm. I learned, um, uh, uh, you know, psychic surgery principles and all of these things because mm -hmm. I was wanting to understand myself. I was wanting to understand what was going on with me and then everyone around me who, with, when we were in pain or emotional or physical, mm -hmm. I was always like, there's got to be something different because there's so much energy available around me. So I was always seeking, okay, how do we resolve this? How do we feel better? And so I was so interested and I, I came to the mystery school, um, not looking for healing, but then when I found out, oh, they're doing all this in addition to the other things I was interested in, I was like, sign me up. And mm -hmm. as I started to understand, you know, it's, it, it's language, right? We have the same words for, or we have different words for the same thing. Mm -hmm. And so I knew I had, it was coming with my own ideas about healing and my own definitions. And I had to just sit and listen and say, okay, where is it familiar? Where is it the things that I don't know? And, and after already having over 20 plus years of, of training in the healing arts, 
I was literally blown away with the sophistication of what the mystery school had. As I got to know the school more, I was like, oh, well, that makes sense. It's over 3,000 years of, of an unbroken lineage handed down. So, of course, they're going to be good at this, right? right? You know, it's not something new coming through. And so I got really good at like, okay, what is this? And it just took everything mm -hmm. that I thought I knew and mm -hmm. it just blew it open because it was like, okay, here's how we're going to explain the science of it because our our system, our bodies and our interface with our mind and our spirit and our soul is so sophisticated, right? Mm -hmm. That there's going to be all kinds of things as we turn this system on through life activation and galactic activation and all those things, we turn it on. But if that machine hasn't been running fully, what happens? Things get gunked mm -hmm. up or there's blockages or even, you know, dirt or debris because it hasn't been running before. Right. And so I really started to see as I was helping people is like, okay, trying to apply. That was one of the things in every modality I learned within the school is like, oh, okay, what does this specifically do? I wanted to really understand that. So as a healer, when someone was coming to me, I can help them facilitate, oh, this healing versus another healing. And like you said, mm -hmm. I'm just a facilitator. I'm just the person holding the energy in the space for the person when they're ready to let go of whatever's blocking them from their own healing and, right. and come into that. So, um, yeah, I got very good at, at asking a lot of questions about, okay, how to, where, what part of this very sophisticated system does this work optimally the most? And how would I apply this? Because every single person is unique when they come in with their history, mm -hmm. their physical um, um, issues, their genetics, mm -hmm. you know, where they're at on the path of knowing themselves, right? right. It's, it's the whole thing that you, just, you can't make assumptions. You have to listen as the person who's going to be holding that healing space for them to really listen and find out, okay, what is, how can we apply this best? Yeah. And like you said, it's a journey, right? There's no one and done. And and us, we're too, we're too sophisticated. I can't like give you a like, okay, here's one healing and you're good. Okay, great. Go on and know yourself. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot more That's deeper really. than that. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just brought up so many wonderful things we could talk about for the rest of the podcast here. But, you know, <laughs> something that, that really touches me is that, you know, the, the listening really is essential. We do need to listen. And when we listen to our clients and we listen to multidimensionally what's being presented to us, um, that's the core essence of this whole sort of mini series that I'm doing right now is is sharing some of those stories of us. And of course, with confidentiality and any client details removed, stories of kind of almost generalized but specific healing stories, you know, clients who have come presenting these kinds of things and with these wh whatever these things might be. And within their breadth and depth of the healing journey that they want to go on, what what things have we used with our clients in terms of the mystery schools, mm -hmm. healing tools, and where have we helped clients get to? What has that journey been like for them? They, they've gone through this step, and then they took that step, and then we did this healing for them because something was coming up, or uh, an old trauma was being released, or... They were integrating a new level of self-understanding or they were releasing a mental blockage of how they'd always conceived of and thought about themselves uh, or any of a, a million other things right. that can go on. And the healing tools we have are so supportive. And I do think that oftentimes they get um, sort of left in the mental wayside mm -hmm. as people find the mystery school and are so excited by the core path of what we do, which let's be real is very exciting. Yeah. It's exciting that we have initiation. We have the this core hermetic pathway of initiation that takes mm -hmm. us from being a normal human being in our lives to being more than that. And then eventually being outside the entire matrix of the normal human construct so mm -hmm. that we can actually send light as senior initiates in the mystery school, send light into the human world from right. basically being outside of it and yet more in it than ever before being more grounded than we ever were before, but yet also being able to, to take light from pure spirit or pure source or God, goddess, whatever you want to call it, the mm -hmm. universe, and direct that light here in the physical world. We have that enhanced power as initiates. Uh, what do we do with that? That's very exciting. Okay, mm -hmm. well, if I'm going to use that correctly, I need to be a whole person inside. 
-hmm. I need to be healed inside. And because I'm the only one who can heal myself, you might think, well, I just need to meditate and I'll, I'll be good. I'll just heal myself spontaneously mm -hmm. because I had these insights. And there's truth to that. There's mm -hmm. truth to, you know, ultimately all healing comes down to a decision to let go, forgive, accept and move on. Mm -hmm. And in that moment of healing, when we are truly ready to self heal, it is that simple. It really mm -hmm. is that simple. Yet, what do we all need to get there? Personally, I've needed a lot of healing support exactly. to come to those, those mm -hmm. peak pinnacle moments of I am done with this issue that has held me back my whole life and then actually be done with it. I needed mm -hmm. a lot of support to get there. Uh, maybe some people need more support than I did. Maybe people need less support than I did, but that's why it's a healing journey. Mm -hmm. That's why we're doing this podcast series because it's so individualized and I really want to open up that door. And that's why I call the whole podcast unveiling. I want to open these doors yeah. and help people see in to the mysteries of life. So they can see maybe themselves in some of the stories that we might share today about their healing journey and what they might benefit from. So if do you want to add anything to that? Because I'd love to kick it off with asking you to share a story. But yeah. I want to hear if there's anything yeah. else that you want to share first. Well, just following up, I think we're going to be like riffing off each other throughout this throughout this mm -hmm. podcast. Is is it just reminded me of you know the illumination comes in, new understanding comes in, or maybe thing that something that strikes you as you already knew that, but you didn't know it, right? It comes to your mm -hmm. consciousness, mm -hmm. and that increased frequency is allowing you to be in a different place. But that also higher frequency and that and that light from within that's shining shows and illuminates probably a lot of things. And you can let go of those things. But here's the sophistication of our system is it'll still be in a place and like, say, your etheric field or in your DNA that it needs to be even if you're ready to let it go and you have resolved it through meditation, through the practice of ritual and knowing yourself it can still sit there because it takes seven years for our physical body to replicate every cell mm -hmm. and we are a physical being. And so sometimes we need some more help to actually remove that because our thoughts and our, our actual tangible things in quantum physics, right? Mm -hmm. So the belief may still be sitting out there, maybe really kind of far out in our field, but it's still sitting there and we need to be able to have them, um, the way to fully eliminate it out of our system. And there's a lot of healings in the school that deal with all the different layers of this very sophisticated system between our aura and our etheric field. And as we start to understand that, the, we, we don't want to re-engage with these things that we're done with, right, Jordan? Mm -hmm. It's like we've done the work and we're like really ready to let go, there's mm -hmm. usually a modality that is paired with that to support. And there is such a huge relief that comes with that because that is how it's truly done. Because I watched before the mystery school for decades of working with people on long journeys, you know, mm -hmm. trying to re resolve something and they truly had let something go. They truly had like, right. I have done everything in my power to let it go. And they're good for a few years. And then something re-triggers that and it comes right back and they're like, and they come and they're brokenhearted because they're like, why am I re-engaging? I thought I was over mm -hmm. this. Yeah. Addictions um, and old relationships and old exactly. ways of being or like patterns of financial hardships or anything. Yeah. But, yeah. All those things that they wanted to be let go of. And now, now I know the science of like, because I was, I was not understanding like, I, why am right. I even my own self? Like yeah. what? And so learning the sophistication of our system and understanding the science. So it's like, oh, mm -hmm. okay, we need to remove it from this place that it's still right. been kind of hiding in there. And this, right. like I said, the mystery school is for everything I've studied for over 20 years before, it's like, I haven't had anything touched in the same way. And so yeah. this has been interesting. You were talking about stories, right? Um, uh, I had a client come to me uh, with an addiction and they were just like, okay, I'm ready. I'm really ready to let go. And so we go, so we sit down and we start, we start talking about it so I can just actually listen, listen to really what is the root because addictions are always the surface result of actually something else. Right. We get addicted because something else is out of alignment, distorted or missing. 
Yeah. And so we seek to fill that void, right? And so yeah. it's and yes, there are the there are the healing modalities to fix the byproducts of the addiction, addiction what it's done to the body, what it's mm -hmm. done to the mind. But if we don't get to the core of what instigated, right? So we were right. sitting there. Um, and working through it. And, um, and so we started this, this whole journey. And of course it started with, um, you know, uh, an ISIS healing about a new emotional body. Cause they were ready to like engage with themselves in a different way. And in Sophic Ray bringing in more light cause they needed more light to support their decisions. And we started on this journey and, and they were so excited through that whole process. And, it, and it's when mm -hmm. we got to, the etheric reconstruction and celestial code that really let go of what the core was but we had to get through to the core we had that he had to understand what the core was because mm -hmm. i can see something as a trained healer someone can sit in front right. of me and i can see all kinds of stuff but until they actually understand it for themselves they're yeah. going to recreate that and so as the understanding for himself, and that's what you were talking about at the beginning of the podcast, Jordan, is that we aren't, we aren't healing people. They're healing themselves. We are allowing that, that facilitation and that expertise to hold space for them to see. And then when we ask them the question, are you ready to let go? They're like, yes. And yeah. their whole life changes. And, and he's been totally clean and sober ever since then. So yeah. it was yeah. like something that he had struggled with for years and years and years and falling off and coming back. And then he was like, he's like so grateful. And he's thank you so much because it doesn't hit me in the same way. I'm not fighting my desire to mm -hmm. do this addiction. I'm not fighting it anymore. It's gone from within me. Right. Yeah. And it's so amazing how uh, there's so many jumping off points. And I think everything that you're saying, and you're probably hearing them and everything I'm saying too. But <laughs> right, right. <laughs> when we have that, uh, that core of the path of initiation in the school makes it so much easier to heal as well. Because we, you know, we talk about, you know, the human world naturally has this sort of spin to it, if you will, of negativity, where we tend to hold on to issues. We tend to isolate ourselves away from the natural intelligence of the light and the universe and source of all things. And we, the humans tend toward, uh, when left to their own devices, as many things in nature as well, they tend toward entropy. Mm. You know, we do, the human system, unless it's attended to with consciousness and awareness and light and love and, and higher energy tends to degrade. And that's thoughts, minds, emotion, situations in life. And it's why we see so much in the last 20, 30 years, of people stepping into personal development mm -hmm. in so many different avenues of life because people are realizing i think more and more as the planet is raising in frequency and people are waking up that it's not enough to just oh you have a human mind it's like well what are the thoughts in your mind that's going to determine so much mm -hmm. of your reality if not all of your reality and different systems might say different things but in the mystery school we say it's really going to determine um everything like what what passes through you on the higher levels as above so below will manifest in your life there's yes. really no way out Absolutely. of that hermetic law of as above so below you know, it's one of the seven hermetic principles a principle of correspondence so what i hold inside of me with my thoughts so you were talking about the quantum field thoughts are things and that's being proved more and more by neuroscientists which is very cool so even just studying the brain we can't necessarily study the aura with lots of devices, although that's starting to change. Um, but studying the brain and, and the way that the brain operates, you know, there's there's not a good explanation outside of quantum physics and like multiple dimensions. Yes. So that's like the most modern up to date neuroscience that I've read about in the last year or two exactly. is that the brain is operating in at least seven, eight, nine different dimensions and is creating sacred geometric configurations in higher dimensions. And that those are more of what we think of as thoughts not neural impulses. The neural impulses are a physical manifestation of these things. Mm -hmm. And I think we're, we're on a slow tipping point verge of the collective consciousness, at least within more developed countries and more educated groups of the population, understanding, oh, my mind really is this quantum field, multidimensional thing. Even In fact, even my brain is, even my physical brain, much less my, my mind and my spirit self. So, All right. Um, that's right. That's so exciting, Jordan, because yeah. just if I may not to take off the Please. tangent, but why I find the sacred, there's so many <clears throat> sessions that we have that are about sacred geometries, realigning the geometries within mm -hmm. 
maybe activating a geometry that we hadn't had turned on or activated before. And that always is leading to higher, higher frequencies, higher consciousness, thoughts of peace and harmony rather than the distortion that is so available out there. Mm -hmm. And like attracts like and, and quantum, you know, field resonance. So how powerful is it to take control of your own life and your own healing path is to start mm -hmm. to start to activate all of this in you. And so then your thoughts start to be different. And then therefore, then your world is different, right? It's this, again, it's the science of the replication of it is a path. Many have gone down it before. And it, this is the consistency of the results from the results mm -hmm. of that path. And healing is a huge component to know thyself because it's great to reveal everything, but then if you don't change it, your world isn't going to change. You just know more about it. It's like taking in the matrix, yeah. taking the, the red pill and then you're like, and then you don't do anything with it. Then you're like, well, you have all yeah. this knowledge and then you're like, Met, it's yeah. in a worse state before. So many people do that with therapy that I've seen and I'm not knocking therapy because there's a definitely important place for therapy and, and talk therapy and discussing like where my, where my thoughts and feelings and emotions come from. Why do I feel and think and, and emote this way? Uh, there are reasons for that that are based in our childhood, that are based in our traumas, that are based in misunderstandings of ourselves, that are based in repeated thought patterns that are laid down in the in the neurology in our brains. And yet that's that's only a certain portion of the story. Yeah. And if we if we stop there at that, at what is available with talk therapy, we tend to not fully heal. Maybe we heal certain parts of ourselves, but we can't heal the whole self because we're, we're limiting it to what we can think about in our mind, what we can understand through cause and effect. Uh, and that there's a definite reality to that, but there is much more to reality than that. Yeah. You know, like you're talking about energy structures and the etheric field and our DNA and our cells, there are those realities. And then there are realities that, you know, some people are, uh, it's difficult for them to grasp this, but you know, what we call like the astral planes, the different levels of mm -hmm. uh, maybe what people are most used to thinking of in terms of their dreams when you fall asleep at night and you, we dream, we dream in the astral planes, we dream in the astral worlds. And those worlds are no less real than this one, but they are highly shifting and highly subjective. And mm -hmm. they are a lot of where we sort of struggle with and work out the meanings of things. Yeah. And those, that astral body is happening right now as we're awake we're just more tuned into the physical body. And then you close your eyes and you fall asleep at night. You're more tuned in with the astral body and the astral worlds are, are pretty much infinite. I mean, even the physical dimension we live in is vast. The universe is so vast. We can't even imagine it. And the astral planes are even more vast. Mm -hmm. So the, the journey that we go through of uh, our soul making meaning, uh, Carl Jung talked a lot about this. He was also a, uh, actually a senior ritual master in our, in our mystery school lineage as well. Um, mm -hmm. But Carl Jung discussed a lot about the, the, interplay of our dreams and our inner visions and our inner worldly experiences and how that relates to our psychological well-being mm -hmm. um, yes. and how it plays into the collective consciousness and archetypal symbols. And there seems to be a, a healing journey that goes throughout that for mm -hmm. that people follow certain stages. And, you know, Carl Jung was drawing on the teachings of alchemy, especially to right. understand yes. and, and hermetics as well, to understand the symbolism of the journey of the soul as it makes meaning um, on the inner planes. And we as healers in the mystery school, uh, we're not doing what Carl Jung did exactly in terms of uh, a psychological system, but we are assisting a client to integrate their whole being and mm -hmm. to look at all the aspects of themselves in a, in a sequential science over time. And that science sort of, you know, to me and, and all the teachings I've studied in the mystery school, that science hangs on the path of initiation. Mm -hmm. You know, exactly. it's like all, all the major steps in the ladder are initiatory steps. And then yes. all the other systems that we have in the school are ways of filling in the details between those steps of what needs to be learned, uh, the kinds of insights we need to gain. Uh, Kabbalah mm -hmm. is a major system for gaining insights. It's a framework for insights into the self. And the initiatory mm -hmm. steps in the school are related to the different places that a soul lives on the tree of life. The places that a soul is focused and prior to initiation, of course, we are focused in the physical world. Before we ever find the mystery school, before we ever get initiated, we get focused in the physical world and the physical world is filled with um, many, many different levels of illusions that come in through our senses. 
So we get initiated in the school and we start to discover the reality of the inner worlds. And then as we go through those inner worlds, we do things like Kabbalah, we do things like sacred geometry. Mm -hmm. We take these classes. And as you were saying before, those, those things bring up issues that we need to heal. Yeah. They show us the stages of our healing journey. So, you know, well, that, the, that leads ahead. me yeah. into uh, a thing about the journey, right? So as I, you know, I've been, um, uh, I came into mystery school in 2009 and, and started um, learning a lot of different healing modalities and then became a mm -hmm. guide uh, within a year. And so, and, and, and taking people through initiation. And what I started to observe the science of the initiation process is that realignment of the aura and changed mm -hmm. everything about how spirit, how the mind worked, how the body, all this refunctioning of the entire system is now been turned in alignment and working in a different way. Mm -hmm. And so as I became a King Solomon healer, healing um, modality um, practitioner, I found this system that, you know, cause as an initiate, it's like, it's like you come out of that and you're like, oh my God, the world is completely different, right? I have been, my axis mundi has been flipped and everything is, and, and the challenge of how to live life and still be going forward, right? There's a ton of tools that you're given, but it's the practice of it. And as that reveals more, right? And so what I started to see is um, that particular modality at the right time and place. Yeah. If you need other healings, there's always that diagnosis of bringing that light in. But I started seeing the benefit of what King Solomon developed 3000 years ago in this, this uh, process of dealing with each level in that healing series. Mm -hmm. Because it dealt with the tree of life. It, it activate the seal of Solomon and that sacred geometries and, and people, um, started to have movement in their life, right? And right. then we went into healing the central core and harmonizing to the, the universe. And then, okay, then that increased vibration led to, okay, now let's heal the aura. And it's like this whole progression that they was developed 3,000 years ago with the tribes around the world was very sophisticated in taking someone into a better, whole, working, vibrant state post-initiation. And right. it, it turned people where they're just like, they come out of it the other side and going, I know myself deeper. Even if they're, right. even if they haven't taken another class, it's like all of a sudden right. I'm acting in this way that is in harmony with what I just learned with what I would, the and the tools are working better. And it's like, I'm, and I'm inspired. And this spark of life that's inside of me, this joy that's inside of me, I'm accessing because I've just realigned a whole bunch of pieces in my system and cleared a bunch of gunk out and I'm working at a higher optimization yeah. and it's such a powerful thing. And that's why, you know, I love that you, that you're actually talking about this because healing is a journey. It's not a one thing or a two thing or a three thing. We didn't get to where we're at in this day by one incident happening to us or one kind of distortion or words or even our own self-judgment, right? Or whatever trauma we've had to. So to think that it's going to be this, it is a simple thing, but it isn't necessarily the, you know, the, the fast track there. It, 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 I don't even know the words to say, but it's like, there's a commitment to yourself, right? That you want mm -hmm. to see yourself as whole and vibrant. And I think some of the things that we end up with, we're so used to in this world, um, maybe traumatized, maybe not listened to, maybe rejected or abandoned. We're so used to putting the masks on in order to survive that we don't even know what it feels like to be whole, to be right. flowing from within ourselves, to be in alignment with the universe and with God or whatever the levels of divinity. We don't even know what that feels like. So we're so used to being out of sync and out of sorts that we think that's normal. Yeah, it, it really is pretty crazy how when we do, I mean, I remember when I did my own life activation for the first time. I mean, I didn't do my own life. Act you know what I mean? When I first received life <laughs> activation, I wasn't doing it on myself. Um, when I first received life activation in 2005, April 2005, I had done so much healing work in other systems already, but I just, I didn't even want to talk for three days. I just felt this something 
so deep had shifted inside of me that I really had no description for. I had no mm. words for it. It wasn't something I even wanted to tell someone about or at that moment, I just wanted to be in it and yeah. notice what had changed within me because something, it was almost like a, an image I had during the activation was like an inner city, almost like a subterranean city inside the ground that someone renovated and completely tore up and rebuilt during those you know, 29 minutes when they were doing the activation itself. <laughs> and I was, and going through that imagery of like when I was sitting there receiving the activation and this inner subconscious subterranean city within my mind that was like the sum total of all of my parts was somehow being rebuilt and reconstructed in 29 minutes. Just, I, I, and then I came out of it and I, it wasn't just a series of images, but I just felt like an inner door was now open. Like someone had gone through the, the entire blueprint of my psyche, reconfigured it, and then opened an inner door filled with light and, and invited me to step through it. And I was like, whoa, whoa, okay. Um, I'm going to go sit under a tree for like 24 hours and just chill because I don't know what just happened. Um, and it was, no, it was not dramatic. The practitioner wasn't like, oh, my God, I thought, wow. It was so, no, no, no. There was no, it was so relaxed and just so easy and so natural. There's no drama about it. Really simple. And my life started to change. Slowly, I started to have more insights. Slowly, I started to be able to make more interconnections that I was having this thought and I was feeling this way. Oh, this thought leads to this feeling in my body. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, I'm thinking about this and I'm, I'm sensing this and emotionally this is happening. And then this result takes place in my life. I started to be able to trace cause and effect on a higher dimensional level within myself more easily, much right. more smoothly. Uh, I enjoyed my daily life more. I had more energy available to me. I didn't feel as drained by the circumstances or stresses of life. And then two months later, I did galactic activation and I did initiation. Um, now galactic activation is something you have to do after you get initiated, but then it was available to anyone who was life activated. So I did galactic and I did initiation in that sequence two weeks apart. And that was pretty mind blowing to do those back to back one weekend after another. Um, and I, and I just, I never looked back because my life started to change so quickly, right. so rapidly. And then I, I did the King Solomon healing modalities and I did ISIS healing. And for me, I, the, the approach to healing in the mystery school was always let me do more healings hmm. because I, I've got so many results out of that. And for me, I, I came to the mystery school just seeking healing because I, I, I already was a professional spiritual healer and I knew it was what I was seeking. Maybe a lot of our clients don't necessarily come here knowing that they're seeking healing. You they come, some of them do. Some of them, I talk about healing a lot. Mm -hmm. Maybe some of them just want to be better people. Maybe some of them want to know themselves. That's mm -hmm. the most important thing for any kind of healing process is to know yourself know what they yeah. want to do with their life, right? There's something they that, they, that they're not doing. They want to find their purpose, their real purpose, mm -hmm. not what the world has told them. Yeah, mm -hmm. and healing work becomes something we, we're really going to need to do to get to our purpose. For most mm -hmm. people, there are the occasional people who are pretty on track with their purpose and they don't seem to have needed a lot of healing in life and kudos to them. Right. I mean, I do meet those people sometimes. I, I do meet some clients and they're like, I feel great about my purpose in life. I'm doing wonderfully in my relationships and my finances and my health and my purpose feels good. And I just want more knowledge. Great. Okay. Mm -hmm. For those people, maybe I wouldn't recommend as many healings because they're not really yeah. seeking that. Mm -hmm. But I have seen that over time, as those students go through deeper levels of training and initiation, that they will need those healings. They mm -hmm. will hit up against challenges there. Nobody is perfectly resolved with their ego yet. We're human. <laughs> like we have that, we have that human quality and that human condition that is that inherent, mm -hmm. uh, like we're, we're always learning something. We're always inherently learning something just by the, by the fact that we're here on earth. So we don't get out of that. And so people often are brought to a deeper level of humility through the mystery school path of realizing, uh, even if they came in, not thinking they really needed a lot of healing work done that, oh, I do need a lot of healing work done to get mm -hmm. to a higher level. I was functioning at this level in my life, but if I want to get up to this level of functioning in my life, I'm going to need to do some serious, some serious healing work. And, and that's the beauty of working with an experienced guide in the mystery school. Once someone's become a guide in the mystery school, you know, you and I might've become guides maybe a little bit more quickly 
But now, typically, if someone who's become a guide has been doing this work at least three, four, five years, most mm -hmm. of the time, on average, I'd say, maybe way longer. Um, and we really require that anyone who becomes a certified guide has done a lot of work mm -hmm. on themselves, which I think is a really beautiful thing that we, yeah. we have those sorts of uh, requirements for progression in the mystery school right now, because anyone who's uh, gone to Healers Academy 1, Healers Academy 2, they've done other types of specialty healings, all that's required for, for pretty much every guide now, um, yeah. with a few exceptions, depending, you know, if they're in a country where they can't get easily to trainings. But, um, but most people who are guides will have dozens of healing modalities yeah. at their disposal, and they will mm -hmm. have gone through those modalities themselves over a period of many years. They will have gone mm -hmm. through Kabbalah. They will have taken classes in many levels of sacred geometry. They will have done, you know, many years of rituals and meditation and really like walked the talk. Mm -hmm. that's the so best when, way to serve people right because that's what a yeah. guy is doing is is helping them to know themselves deeper and yeah. like you said with the going you know to know yourself the eternal self that's the thing everybody knows mm -hmm. themselves they know all the personality we're very familiar with all of our drama and all right. of that you know in this day and age with the selfies and you know everybody's, you know, posting this and that. And it's like your whole life is out there. Right. Mm -hmm. So we're very familiar with that part of ourselves, but this path we're talking about is about knowing the eternal self, who mm -hmm. you are and who you've always been, who you are also learning and developing and growing and uh, tasting and testing. And also what is your purpose in finding that and that, which is the source of true joy. Mm -hmm. And in that, in order to do that, you have to let go of the masks that you took on, whether mm -hmm. it was from trauma or not. Most of us put on a lot of masks in order to survive. And we start doing it at a very young age, depending upon our circumstances. But even if you haven't had any trauma and you had this idyllic life and everything is great and you've overcome everything, that's great. You still have some things that is you still haven't seen about your eternal self. There's still mm -hmm. because your DNA wasn't completely turned on. Mm -hmm. Your soul wasn't activated. There are things that your system wasn't turned on. So how can you say you really know yourself, right? And mm -hmm. when that happens, there is some alignment. There is some things that to make that actually help you to see see yourself clearly probably for the first mm -hmm. time in areas like you were talking about for people, the deeper you go on the path to knowing yourself and going through Kabbalah and going through higher initiations and, and practicing it in mm -hmm. that practicing of that, you are going to be guaranteed to show things the both the resolved and unresolved, both the light and the dark of yourself. And what are you going to do with that? How are you yeah. going to face it and handle that? And these were mm -hmm. why, the mystery school is so sophisticated in all of the healings. Like it, they have a healing modality for every single thing I can think of, whether right. it's psychological, whether it's mental, emotional, physical, spiritual, your soul, whatever is mm -hmm. out of alignment and distorted, it has a healing for it. And I'm, I, and, and, do they just keep unrolling more of them like we just right. learned a new healing modality last november jordan i mean it's oh like God. going away the initiate base so, so life-changing yeah because it's dealing with our interdimensional selves because you know 10 years 15 years ago we were just trying to feel better and heal and get the physical and the, so mm -hmm. now it's like okay so as a group and a collective we're progressing okay, great, let's start dealing with all of the issues that come from being an interdimensional being and being in the multiverse and exchanging. We're just like, oh my God, right? Yeah. And they're like, yeah, we've had this for a while, but you know, now it's ready to share. And so yeah. that's the amazing thing of a lineage that's been around for so many thousands of years, been doing this and has an understanding that quantum physics is finally catching up to and mm -hmm. finally talking about the hermetics and the principles that have been around for 8,000 years or longer. So it's like, it's exciting to be within a, a, an organization that is answering all of the questions from all aspects and right. it illuminates issues, but it, then it always has, and here's a way to resolve it. And it gives right. you the power to choose. It's up to you because right. we can't heal you. We can't fix you. It's your path, your life. And it's all about your empowerment. And I have to check, you know, if people 
um, are just seeking knowledge, that's great. But it's like, how do you apply that without also applying the practical side of if it's just knowledge, you're going to sit with it, not do anything with it, even changing your own life. It's like, that's not, that's not really our lineage. We're, we're not, we're not sitting there. We're about practical applications because it's about fulfilling your life purpose in order mm -hmm. to build a better world in order to leave a legacy behind of something that there is something on a higher frequency and a higher vibration to bring peace back to earth and to heal within so that the world outside of us can be healed without. Right. Because it is, as the path of many traditions talk about the spiritual warrior, it is a peaceful warrior. And you cannot, mm -hmm. you cannot actually help the world if you aren't at peace within and resolved what is, what is inside. Because otherwise, you're just going to keep replicating it out there and contributing right. to the collective, which is why we're so at each other's throats all the time you know mm -hmm. yeah. yeah absolutely and it's it's interesting how there's there's this uniqueness to our path because we have the healing work alongside the path of initiation mm -hmm. and the path of initiation can be seen in so many different ways and this is not a, a mini series in this podcast on initiation but we can't talk about healing without talking about initiation mm -hmm. because in the initiations on this path we have you know, the warrior path and the healer path. And we all in the mystery school start on the healer path because that's where we need to start. We start with self-healing. And then after we do uh, the second step on that path, so we do the adept initiation and empower thyself. We do the second step initiation of the healer's academy. And then we go over and we cross train on the warrior path of the ritual master. And each of these steps, and then there's ritual master one, two, 2.5 and third step. And somewhere along the way, usually between second and third step ritual master, we, we also do guide because to be a third step ritual master, we have to be a guide who's serving others and initiating others and doing healing work and teaching classes to others. And, and, you know, people, as they come to the mystery school and they first look at that chart that it, it, it's kind of just a bunch of words, right. it's a bunch of ideas. And then they get initiated and they realize they're reaching for that next level and their soul eventually wants to go to healers Academy, maybe mm -hmm. immediately, maybe mm -hmm. five years down the line. But at some point their soul goes through the lessons that it was seeking. It learns those lessons and then it graduates from those lessons and it realizes I need now want and need that next level of training. I need mm -hmm. that next level of keys that are handed down in healers Academy. And then the soul chews on those lessons for a while. It learns those lessons and it learns them faster because there's an acceleration to the path of initiation. The initiation yes. is not merely a symbolic act of, I'm gonna now hit you on the head and shoulders with a sword and now you're part of some sort of ancient order and we do these rituals and we you know, charge you a fee every year and it's cool and now we said you're initiated. It's not, it's not just symbolic. Yes. The, oh, the path no. of initiation <laughs> itself is, is quite the opposite of just symbolic. There is symbolism <laughs> to it, but we're not here in an armchair like smoking a pipe studying the symbolism. We're, the, the, the initiation instantly moves you into a new way of being. Yeah, exactly. You know, very, very quickly within a few months, you're living in a different way in your life. You are, you are more aware. You are more connected. You are more grounded. You have way more light available to you. You have way more doors and choices open to you. Old doors, you know, that don't serve you anymore are already closing within, within usually weeks or months after right. initiation. Uh, life will never be the same again after initiation. You have gone up to a permanently higher frequency vibration in your life. You will never go back down to that lower frequency vibration. You are now sealed in at a higher frequency and every step of initiation goes up in frequency. And so with greater power and light comes greater responsibility. And then the, the healing work goes in between those things. Right. So that we can, uh, we can adapt to, oh, well, I, I have a mask that prevents me from taking that responsibility. Mm -hmm. I have a mask that prevents me from feeling myself in that way. I have a, a barrier in my heart that won't allow me to love myself fully at this higher level of light. Before, I didn't feel like I had any barriers in my heart. But now that I've gone to Healers Academy, I realized um, I really need to work on that, actually. Like, I have some mm -hmm. things that I should shift because I'm not feeling um, optimized in my life. And so the, the healing work that we do helps us to not only stay optimized on our path and always be in a higher frequency as much as possible. But uh, for many people, it is, it's like the, the missing ingredient to having real joy mm -hmm. um, right. as you go up in frequency to let go. 
Because if I'm carrying my stuff up higher and higher up the spiritual mountain of frequency, it's going to get heavier and heavier the longer I go. I got to put it down at some point. And I might need some expert help in putting it down. Yeah. If I did, if, if I didn't, that would be very weird. And most, I, that's just not how life works. Like the people that I know from high school, and I hope that at some point they see this podcast, that'd be cool. But when I have seen people from high school or college, oftentimes, yeah, they've grown in some ways, but oftentimes they're pretty similar in frequency to what they were when I knew them in high school right. 30 mm -hmm. years ago, 25 mm -hmm. years ago. Uh, mm -hmm. And this is not an insult. It's just, if you're watching, I love you. And it's great. Um, mm -hmm. You be you, you do you. But we're definitely not like, a calcified path, right? <laughs> yeah, there's so many more options available <laughs> to you. And when you step onto this path, you turn around to your homies who you hung out with five years ago and you're like, wait, what do I even have in common with these people? Mm -hmm. Because I'm not in the same place spiritually, vibrationally, emotionally, mentally. I'm not thinking about the same things that I was five years ago. I'm not thinking about the same things that I was two years ago. My life is so different every few years with this path in a better and better way, in a very drastically improved way that the people and places and things and activities of the past are at best distant memories. And, you know, most of the time they're just gone. And I can reminisce about the good, the good old times, but really the good old times are not nearly as awesome as the times I live in now. So I don't really find myself reminiscing about the good old times all that much because my life is a million times better now than it was back then. And my life five years ago was also pretty good. And 10 years ago was pretty good. And 50, and like, it just gets better. I tell you, it just keeps feeling better. the older I get, the better life gets, uh, or even actually if it can it'd be this good. Honestly, right. and and my family all knows that. Like my kid, right. the life of her that I I found the mystery, and was was led to it because it's changed all of their lives in my life and the level of yeah. that I can do so much greater. Right, and um, I have a funny story about um, like Healers Academy. Uh, yeah. cause you, you mentioned it. So I'm, I'm, I'm tend to be a little bit, you know, like uh, logic on logical side of like things have to kind of make you like, okay, I want to always like have it make sense. Right. And I was like, wow, well, the second step initiation is so important because the level of empowerment that happens with it that, you know, we were talking about the first step is to make your own life better and to start that healing process and doing it. But to take the second step in this initiatory you gain so much. It's really about fulfilling your life purpose. It's to give you that power so that you have energy, ability, and to do good in the world, more light. Where it is, businesses, it's not about, and it's not necessarily about being a full time. And so I, we shouldn't, why do we call it Heels Academy? Because it's like I have all these people that I'm initiating and go to Heels because they don't want to become. You're them. breaking up a little bit. Oh, yeah, I'm breaking up a little bit. You're breaking up a little bit. You're saying you have people you're initiating and they don't necessarily want to go to Healers Academy because they don't want to they be a professional healer. They don't want to be a professional healer. Like, I'm, I'm right. not doing that. And I'm like, well, no, no, no. And so I was like, well, we should read this. Be here brilliant. So is like, it took me a couple of years to understand Healers Academy, the, the way it's called that is in order to step into your purpose, which is it really are your true eternal that you're just getting to know, you have to feel yourself first to understand all this complexity of how your mind works and what it does and where you store stuff when you're in resistance and all these kind of things. And Heroes Academy is a huge training to bring you to that level of doing that. So that's why it's called, I was like, oh, okay. So it just, it took, it was like understanding because then for, I think anybody who wants to do good in the world in that, helping them on that path to taking that step of initiation, that second step of initiation and learning how powerful they are, they can heal themselves and therefore then turn and he and, and do good in the world and let that light shine through with mm -hmm. distortion without their 
masks without their own traumas or their own filters or their own interpretation, right? Because isn't that what we all want to be is our true selves and actually doing what we came here to do without it being being filtered through something that just causes it not to be the truth of who mm. we really are. And that isn't that the joy that we have attained, Jordan? We talk about how much better our life is now than it was right. years ago. Filtered. Because we're not, we, we are actually, we are ourselves all the time. And we don't have to hide behind all these things and we can have joy. We don't make up stories and lies in our relationships and we don't lie to ourselves. Like it's easy, you know, like it's easy in a, in a relationship, hopefully at some point to like not lie to your partner. I've never lied to a partner ever in any relationship. Like I've just never lied to anyone. I don't lie. It's not a thing I do. But how many times have I lied to myself? Exactly. You know, and then like, the, it's like now I don't know. lie to myself. Or you don't even know. You are not aware of yeah, what. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, you're subconscious. I, don't lie, I would never lie to myself consciously, but like <laughs> I, <laughs> well, I lie to myself know. because so I, don't, you know. I don't know the truth enough of me. Yeah. If I don't know the truth enough of me, yeah. I'm going to be telling myself a story about how I think my life is. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's not even what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe maybe the story I have of my life isn't who I actually am. And so, yeah, you're right. The reason our lives are so much better is that we're not doing most of that anymore. Yeah. We've eliminated 95% of that, 99% 90, of that from our lives. And so there's always more that we can clear. There's always more that we can understand. Mm -hmm. There's always higher levels we can go to. When we go to that next level of training or initiation that opens us up to a new level and dimension of reality, we discover there's more things to clean up there. Right. There's more, there's more reconstruction, reconfiguring, re refining, tuning, whatever you want to call it, tweaking of ourselves. Uh, and sometimes major, major openings, major aha moments. Like, uh, you know, right now, the, one of the, the three um, Ipsismuses, one of the three heads of the Mystery School, Ipsismus, Dave, you know, you and I were just up at uh, about a month ago in Toronto doing mm -hmm. the Warriors of Light program. And just some of the teachings that we have in the Mystery School right now that are, that are being released around... Uh, understanding divine masculine and feminine energies. Oh my gosh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So life-changing, like save so many people dozens of years of relationship suffering mm -hmm. to take one day of a training, mm -hmm. you know, to sit in a training for one day. But to even be able to understand and receive that, you, you pretty much need to be a ritual master. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Because you, your vibration has to be at a certain frequency to even take in those keys. Because you can't hear it. Yeah, you won't be able to, you're, you'll be like, You'll either think you already know it or your ego will twist it around in some way and shove it somewhere else and try and put it in a box of what you think you already understand. Um, this you know, is how that truth that hits it comes in. That's a different than just sitting in. We've all sit in seminars and self-help and always tried to, you know, most people that are, or any any connection to us are always already trying to find something better. You know, they're, right. they're looking to better themselves or their mind or healing or whatever. So there's lots of places to go out there and you're like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Or you, you get some knowledge. But if the only stimulation that's happening is up here, is that really the truth that, that, that really changes? Because it's the transformation that hits you here at mm -hmm. your heart that really like you're like, oh, my God, that's the aha moment that breaks mm -hmm. open. Because where do all our masks sit where we where we hide from the world and from ourselves. It's all around the distortion yeah. of the mind. That's why so many of our, if, if you're, and when you step on the path and you're going deeper into it, at the beginning, we're dealing with a lot of the stuff that's the easy stuff, really. It's very the very evident that's blocking, right? You know, mm -hmm. physical and maybe some emotional stuff, but it's like when we get into the illusion around the mind, you're talking about that illusion, mm -hmm. that's the harder ones. Right. Yeah. Because there's parts of ourselves, even our own brain, that's like the masks and the shadows and the labyrinth that we have created mm -hmm. and also part of the human collective that mm -hmm. we're tapped into is like we have to break out of that to remember that we are eternal spiritual beings and that we are multidimensional beings living in many realities all at the same time. Yeah. And to do that, we have to start breaking the constructs of the traditional mindset. And that can be kind of scary 
that can be actually a really scary thing to start to open up those doors that have never been mm -hmm. opened and to tear down walls that have limited ourselves and limited who we think we are really are. We have to do that in a way that's hermetically true also. Exactly. You know, and hermetic that. teachings are point to the, they always point to the truth unfailingly yeah. again and again and again, because they don't claim themselves to be the truth, but they always point to the truth. Yeah. And there's a really perfected science of hermetics in the mystery school that I've never seen anywhere else. It's written about in hermetic texts that were written by ancient initiates. But if you're not initiated, you don't know how to read those texts. Exactly. The keys aren't open for you. The doors aren't open because you don't have the keys. Right. And in those, in that, in that receiving and being able to start to perceive the hermetic understanding, which the entire multiverse is based upon right. to be able to actually interface safely and with consciousness and awareness and understanding that's going to show you where there is places that are blocking that and that's even more important to get healing at those levels honest right. like it is essential because it's such a new world you don't have the same framework when you're starting to break into mm -hmm. eternity and right. timelessness and quantum reality and to do right. it in a good way to be sane and productive and to create and bring that back down into here and create a beautiful world based upon that interface. Right. There's some work to be done and there's some things Absolutely. to face and, in, and it's an investment, right? Yeah. You know, it's a commitment and an investment in that. Yeah. And that's really, I mean, that's the, I've never really successfully seen anyone do that without the ritual master program. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they, they need to, they need to be a ritual master if they're going to successfully, safely, in a grounded way, penetrate through the veils of the multiverse. Right. Well, ritual I, I, wish, I wish there were lots of other ways to do it. I wish that like every spiritual path on earth did that. <laughs> that would be so cool because it would be so much easier for humanity to progress. Right. Right. I haven't I haven't seen anything compared to it in, in, in the in the 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 in a safe way, how to engage and to really move into that quantum magic and quantum reality. And I know, you know, it's, we, we call it the warrior path within the school, but actually I like to call it the magic path because mm -hmm. it's, it's really about magic. You cannot actually become a master of, of, of true magic and, and actually engage in quantum reality. You, you can't actually know yourself without the ritual master path. You yeah. can't. Because it opens the mind, it gives you keys to understanding, it gives you, like you were saying, it's like, okay, we get to a certain level in your path, and, and you and I both trained very highly, been through, you know, you've graduated mm -hmm. school of mage, I'm currently in the school of mage, in this training, mm -hmm. and we get to a certain level, we're like, okay, we're kind of like, okay, we've, we can, we, we, we've, uh, we've gotten to a certain place, and then all of a sudden, our, our, our third order goes, okay, so great. You're here. Now let's open the next level of reality. Yeah. And we're like blown away. Right. Yeah. But it's getting to know ourselves deeper in that, um, is that RM path because yeah. it is, and there's an accountability. For the multidimensionality of who we are. Right. And that, and that responsibility mm -hmm. that's come with that too yeah. is why it's the hardest path because yeah. it confronts the negative ego. It's very unpleasant sometimes, Mm -hmm. um, because with that power and that knowledge and understanding, we can be so dangerous to ourselves and to others, right? So there's a responsibility, like quotes to quote Spider-Man, who quoted someone else, is with that great power becomes uh, is necessary great response. With, with great power comes great responsibility, and so yeah. taking responsibility for that and ownership of that of your own self and the power that you are asking to receive, and knowing yeah. yourself as a divine eternal being. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, the, like you were talking about the, the modality that was just handed down recently for the first time in mm -hmm. modern history in the mystery school, which is the auric region that we learned, which is also addressing all the multidimensionality of the, the yeah. human through the, the seven layers of the aura and the interconnection of the aura with the multiverse and with the, the, the planets and the, the signs of the Zodiac and the, the galaxy and the, the concepts presented themselves are mind blowing. And then the results of the healing are even more mind blowing mm -hmm. than what comes up with it and how it helps us, you know, as higher initiates confront aspects of ourselves that we didn't even know existed, but we confront them and heal them all in one session and we're over it and we have the light 
in that part of our being. Mm -hmm. And whereas, you know, two years ago, maybe we didn't even know that we had that part of our being. Exactly. We weren't even aware that that existed. Mm -hmm. And now we've done something to shift it in, in some way. And there will be something else to shift that in the future as well. Um, that's, it's, you know, I want to bring it back to a few basics. And I love that we're running way over our time here because I think this is going to be one of those extended episodes. <laughs> so for those of you who are still Sorry. watching, um, I'm grateful <laughs> because sometimes these episodes need to be longer so that we can really, we can really mm -hmm. dig into the, the core of what needs to be said because sometimes it takes a little while to get to the core of what needs to be said. And everything we've been saying is really, I think pretty, you know, hard hitting and, and, um, deep in this, this, this episode here, but you know, there's really simple things too, like that even a person early on in their path, they don't know about themselves, but then mm -hmm. they come and they meet with a mystery school guide and that mystery school guide can bring them to save them years or decades of their life with sometimes mm -hmm. just a few modalities. Like I remember somebody came to me many years ago. She was a school teacher. Um, she had very specific subtle locks and blocks in her life. Like she had a boyfriend. It was working pretty well. She owned a condo. That was nice. She had her job and her career. She was in school to get like a PhD in education as well because she wanted to do policy. It's There's so many different things that she wanted in her life. Uh, and so, so many things that were actually working pretty well. But we got to talking over a few sessions and there were really serious things that she felt were blockages that she wanted to work better. Now, on the outside, someone else in a different position in life might say, well, you actually have a lot of elements of a really wonderful life. Why do you want to make changes? But the soul is very subjective like that. The soul mm -hmm. evaluates itself all the time, uh, especially the more aware we are, and decides, well, I want this or I want that. I need this or I need that. Um, and that's, uh, that, again, it's all subjective. So she came in for a bunch of healing sessions and we went on a journey. I, we did life activation. We did spirit activation. I suggested an initiation for her because I really felt like she was ready. And she said, no, I'm not. I don't know. I, I, that sounds great, but I don't want that right now. Um, and more things came out over time. Like it came out after maybe our third or fourth session. She was like, actually, I kind of have a serious drinking problem. Mm -hmm. But I didn't realize when I first saw you that it was a problem. Mm -hmm. So it took two months into this healing journey together for her to realize I've done three, three or four sessions with you now. Every couple of weeks, I've, I've come in and I've had a life activation, a spirit activation. I think she had had an ISIS healing at that point, maybe something else, like an aura healing. And she was like, "My, this is a problem. I want to stop. So we did a few. We did an Ensophic Ray 3 series for her to help mm -hmm. her sort of reboot her sense of herself and bring mm -hmm. a lot more light into different parts of her and be able to make more choices, just free up her ability to make new choices. And then she still felt really stuck on it. And she came in for another session and I was like, you know what? We're ready to do a soul retrieval, mm -hmm. ready to do a soul retrieval, which is not a session I do all that often for people, actually, considering all the different healing modalities that I have. I, it's not like I mean, I probably have over 60, 70 different healing modalities at this point mm -hmm. that I do. So not everything gets rotated mm -hmm. all the time in terms yeah. of clients who are coming through. Mm -hmm. um, so we did a soul retrieval and she she was actually asleep most of the time on the table doesn't mm -hmm. didn't really remember most of she was just lying there and we were bringing slowly parts of the soul back in and as we do with that modality and all of a sudden after that she went through this massive change she just realized she didn't need to drink anymore that she realized mm -hmm. that there was a part of her that left when her dad died when she was a teenager in her teenage years and through that trauma of one of her parents passing away when she wasn't really ready emotionally to handle that um, she had always felt outside of herself and then finally, after you know seven or eight sessions of working together, we were able to bring a part of her. She wouldn't have been ready on day one or day ten, but after you know about six months of working together, we were able to bring this part of her back that had left, and she just her d desire to drink just disappeared, mm -hmm. and she immediately felt like she was now ready for initiation. Mm -hmm. She was like, "When's the next class?" And I was like, "It's actually I think it's like next weekend," and she mm -hmm. signed up on the spot and she got initiated. And then after that, she changed her entire life. She she did that like that. It was like a turning point for her. And you know, I share that story because even though that was that was ten years ago now or nine years ago now that I was working with her, uh, 2014. It still stands out in my mind because she was just so dedicated to. She knew there was something she was looking for, and she knew that 
-hmm. she would find it in herself and she knew she needed help to find it in herself. And I think that's really that, that sort of razor's edge sword that a lot of people walk on of self-empowerment of like, I am a self-empowered sovereign being and I need help. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like, those things are not mutually exclusive. Mm -hmm. Like I am also a sovereign self-empowered being and I need help. We're not here to do this alone. I need highly experienced mm -hmm. professional help. Mm -hmm. And I, I say that both jokingly and totally seriously at the same time. Right. Because I've, I've never gotten successfully to a new level in my life without a guide of some kind. Whether that guide was an initiated guide in the mystery school, like when I found the mystery school, whether that guide was a teacher in shamanism or Reiki before I found the mystery school or angelic energy healing therapies, there mm -hmm. was always a guide. And mm -hmm. when I became a guide myself in the mystery school, then there was a ritual master teacher. And as mm -hmm. I went all the way through the ritual master program, there's still a ritual master teacher. And now there's the third order. Mm -hmm. You know, we have three Ipsismuses who are sort of the, the central pillar of the, the lineage, holding yeah. that lineage energy. And there aren't that many people I can go to in the mystery school because I've done this work for so long now who can redirect me and help me go to that next level, but they're always there. Yeah. To help me find that next level. And again, I, I put the work in, I do the meditation, I do the rituals, I change my life, but I need a guide to show me. And there's a, there's a wisdom to that and a humility to that and a maturity to that that is not easily won, at least not for me. Yeah. Maybe for some people, they come naturally to life with that wisdom and that humility, and that's great. I, it wasn't natural to me to have that wisdom and, and that humility to know that. It just it took me, it took me many years of many systems before the mystery school and the system of the mystery school to come to that place of uh, admitting to myself what I really wanted and needed. Mm -mm. But this is why in, in the, the special thing of uh, a, what a guide can do is hold that space, right? Mm -hmm. And the training and the, the depth of the reason it's such a powerful initiation is the expansion of themselves in order to be able to mm -hmm. really hear and discern what is the best service for you, whoever is sitting in front of them and the best mm -hmm. advice in that and being able to contain, cause like we started this conversation talking about how sophisticated we are and all the things that could be what is causing the block of the light of their own light and emanating out, mm -hmm. right? And that's the specialty of a guide to be able to pinpoint that, see that and help them to see that too, to reveal right. it to them so that they can be part of that letting go and, and, and stepping into a new place and replacing it with their eternal self. They don't mm -hmm. know what it is. They don't know that they're, they, there's, they can't replace that. It's just like, it's a big, the kid and they's caught up in these loops and as the guide, it's like bringing those pieces of themselves back. I love mm -hmm. your story about the soul retrieval because I have found um, that that session at the right time in their journey, mm -hmm. absolutely amazing transformation that can happen. And it's not the first thing normally that comes up. And no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But at the right time, it's like, okay, we've healed this and let go of this and we've activated this. And now all of a sudden it's like, okay, now it's time. And bringing those pieces of the soul back. I um, had this one uh, uh, one client had done a number of different healing modalities and was uh, going along and, you know, just kind of like on, on their own progression and path, but still like struggling with being here physically on the planet. Mm. Like, mm struggled with suicide the whole life and just didn't just felt like it was just so much work to be alive. Mm. Yeah. Right. And then we did this session and afterwards, and they basically, they, they were in and out, but they were just bawling when they came out of it. They just said, I feel like before I've only was 60% here in my life that I could never, no matter what I did, I was only present, be able to maximize present 60% of my being of what I feel now that I have after mm. this session. 
And it was like, mm -hmm. they lived their entire life. They were, they were almost 30 years old and mm -hmm. they lived their entire life living at 60% or less and yeah. trying to live and exist. Right. And that's yeah. why the guide is really the, the, the guide in the healing training and all the healing modalities they have has that discernment because they're working with that person's spirit guides, these beings mm -hmm. that have been with them to help and like, hey, this is what is necessary now. This is what is the best for them now in their progression. Because my opinion doesn't mean anything. It is really what is best, my, my opinion, but my expertise, when I step out of the way of, you know, uh, an outside perspective and I'm in that energy and I'm listening and I'm listening to their guides, I'm listening mm -hmm. to the guides I have as a healer, then the true knowledge of what is the best to serve this person to help them in that moment comes right through. And I mm -hmm. can move in that confidence and, and serve them in the highest capacity because I want every interaction to be of the highest and best good. Right? right. You know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's there's, there's so many examples. I think, you know, another thing that comes to mind, I, there was for my own life one time, I haven't really been particularly depressed in my life. That's not, it's not like depression hasn't been a, a thing I've struggled with very much personally. There was a time in high school, like my freshman year of high school, uh, where that was pretty depressing. <laughs> um, there's, and I won't go into all the details of that story because it's not a very much of a healing story, actually. <laughs> well, actually it is, but it's more, it's self-healing through meditation. Mm -hmm. uh, I really brought myself out of that through getting on a spiritual path and meditating a lot and then having a lot of uh, spontaneous enlightenment experiences through doing two or three hours a day of meditation. So it is a kind of a healing experience. But long story short, there was that time my freshman year of high school uh, and that was sort of situational depression you know, being, I was a kid who sort of was a late bloomer and I was pretty significantly overweight and like had no friends and just felt like a total dork all the time. And then I had a spiritual awakening and, and sort of fixed my self-concept through meditative practices. Cool. Great. And then there was another time situationally also, I was pretty depressed my senior year of college um, for a whole other set of reasons, but long story short, really Kind of healed that through doing some healing sessions that i was the shamanic healing sessions that i was doing at that time and then one more time in my life when i was depressed was after my mom passed away about a year and a half after she passed away i was just hit with this really intense depression and i could now from where i sit now i could probably deeply analyze it in a different level as to what exactly was happening there there was probably some ancestral influence multidimensionally happening um there were some things happening in my marriage and relationship at that time that were really challenging. Um, I don't think anything that most people would consider to be challenging, but just emotional dynamics that were challenging. Mm -hmm. um, there was no addiction. There was no infidelity. There was no uh, harsh words. It was just emotional dynamics that were difficult at the time, and they seemed intractable and unchanging. So the combination of maybe some interesting ancestral stuff and some relationship stuff, but Beyond all of that, there was also just an energy that I didn't understand that was happening in my mind that felt kind of crushing and challenging. And I didn't, I didn't know what it was. And I was working with a mystery school healer at the time who <clears throat> was traveling into town. And she was like, you know, I think you need ISIS two healing, second mm. level of ISIS healing. Mm. And I said, what is that? I didn't even know what it was. I hadn't, I hadn't had it handed down. I was, uh, I, I just hadn't had access to it before. So mm -hmm. I received that. And within 20 minutes after receiving it, all the depression was gone. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was at the point where I was considering, even though I had done a bunch of other healing sessions, they weren't the right healing session. Mm -hmm. right. I was doing other things like I'd had a cord cutting and I had had, uh, I had another ISIS healing and I had done the King Solomon healing modalities again the previous year. And I was, I had had other types of healing and Oki and healing, et cetera. Uh, but I had it was about having the right healing at the right time yes. and talking with someone who could really hear and listen and make the right recommendation. And they were like, you need ISIS too. Let's do ISIS too. And literally the depression was gone in 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. it, was that, it was that simple. And I don't even know what happened. They like right. toned an archangel's name 22 times and they like <laughs> clapped their hands in front of my third eye. And 
know, I know, right? I love that one. I'm just standing there and sitting there and I'm kind of half passed out in my chair, right? Uh, right and then yeah. 20 minutes later, I'm not depressed. And I that's know. already, I'm already a, a guide and a 2.5 ritual master at that point. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, it's to me, it's, it's one of those funny stories about getting the right healing at the right time. But exactly. when you're really depressed, life's not very funny. Mm -mm. Like, there's nothing funny about that. And um, you'll try anything. Yeah. I was like, do I need medication? And I'm someone who doesn't really believe in medication. I mean, you know me pretty well. And it's like, I'm not yeah. like, let me go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. Let me go get on some meds. I was like, maybe I need to go to see a naturopath and get on some like herbal. Uh, I actually was trying uh, homeopathic like antidepressant mm -hmm. at that time, yeah. which was doing absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. um, I was trying like these like herbs that were supposed to be like relaxing to the mind so you could de-stress and like that was doing absolutely nothing because it wasn't a physiological thing that I needed. It was a spiritual, yeah. emotional thing. Right. And out, you know, the out there in the world, that's there. They only can diagnose what they can perceive and right. they only perceive this. And so they can only diagnose that. And so therefore they're missing all the other complexities of the whole self and those things actually cause a lot of the physiological things that we deal with because we're all interconnected so mm -hmm. having someone who has that whole greater understanding and what's nice is that the mystery school we're all well we're all connected right so you may be working with someone but there's a lot of times i mean i have a lot of modalities just like you i mean like i have just basically mm -hmm. everything in the mystery school. So when people say, well, what do you do? And I'm like, well, well. <laughs> page after page, after page is like, well, like I'm not going to list all of it. Right. But, but there's even then those times where we're like, okay, I think you need to see this person because there's something that I'm being guided or here, like that this, that I'm just know that this, this is going to serve you. And, and that this next mm. step with that too. And that we work together as a team. Right. And that, we're able to just like trust and knowledge because in our training within the mystery school, it is diligent, right? I, I mean, you and I were both in healing modality and practices years before the school, right? But is it a little tough mm -hmm. learning in the mystery school? There's standards and there's testing mm -hmm. and there's to make sure that there's that the practitioners are consistent. And again, using that that approach that is like you do this and you do do this and you do this and it's it gets the same results right you don't change it because you did muscle testing on yourself halfway through and right. determined that you had a better yeah. way to come up with it that day because yeah. archangel michael told you so in your dreams last night it's exactly it's like yeah. nope it's done this i can i can have confidence in referring because there is a consistency and there's a professionalism it's why mm -hmm. we come back and get tested and because we want to be delivering what we say that we are delivering that we've said for three thousand years right? right we want to be able to have that consistency so certification within our organization is really important a certified you know, see healer remains certified and that they're that it is consistent mm -hmm. and, and, and so that people can have that confidence that they're that lineage is coming through in a very pure way and not yeah. a distorted way by people's right. opinions maybe they like oh i can just tweak it a little bit and i'll oh mm -hmm. i think this is i'm getting i'm getting guided or i was just channeling this this inspiration well that's all great but that is not the three thousand years of lineage that comes through and the purity that you can rely upon and that's really right. the difference what separates us from a lot of other things out there is the quality of that and the hermetic tradition of making it based upon hermetics which raises that frequency out of say you know, like this hermetic soul retrieval that we do in the mystery school, I learned soul retrieval through shamanism and, mm -hmm. and a whole other, and I've been doing it for years prior to the mystery school, same as my right. etheric surgery. I had a training in other traditions and I come in here and there's just this level of right. professionalism, precision, the science, there's so much theory and understanding before we even allowed to start practicing because we right. have to be able to hold the energy and why only certain initiatory levels can actually do certain healings because you have to be at that greater level of understanding to hold yeah. the energy in that way you have to be able to wield that and not from your personality and not from what your own opinion and that yeah. is a really deviation from again like i said a lot of other a lot of other places out there so yeah, yeah. when someone yeah. goes to healers academy and they pick up that life activation wand they're wielding the energy of specific archangels but not because they said so 
<laughs> not because they did a meditation on it, but because they're initiated to do so. Yes. And that's, you know, that that statement could sound like many things. Maybe maybe that statement just sounds like marketing to someone. Okay, fine. Okay. Well, whatever, whatever you like to think, that's great. <laughs> but mm -hmm. but the, the, there's the fact of the lineage. Mm -hmm. And with that, the fact that someone's initiated, therefore they have the keys in their energy field permanently installed, if you will, to be mm -hmm. able to flow that frequency into the physical world is very different than, well, I'm flowing Archangel energy because like I intend to. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, mm -hmm. great. Yeah, sure, maybe. Absolutely. Like that that does happen. The archangels are at our disposal to flow energy, mm -hmm. but it's not necessarily the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to, you know, rub my hands together and flow Archangel Raphael's energy because, you know, he's the Archangel of healing and isn't that great? Yes, that Archangel Raphael will come through, but there's actually some rituals that will make it more effective. And there's yes. actually initiations that will ensure that that energy makes it all the way into the physical world and yes. that I have the authority to do it. And then you put that into a modality that has keys and reliably mm -hmm. does the same thing time and time again for thousands of years. Yep. And it always does the same thing. It always works and it always meets each person where they're at and it's always safe. Mm -hmm. It's always effective. And yeah. That's the test is because of the results. Like the, this is what proved to me just like you, it's like, like I saw results immediately on all kinds of things. So I'm like, well, great. What else you got? Right. And, right. and these results are so tangible you, I know you and I have talked about this and I know a lot of others. We have a lot of uh, medical doctors in the mystery school and a lot of scientists and stuff. And right. we've been talking about how do we get these results, you know, demonstrate out there because we, we know we are our clients and see them, but, but people need proof. And I understand that they, you know, yeah. they want to have that. And uh, um, I had this one um, uh, initiate of mine. He was a medical doctor and, um, and he had done a lot of training in the mystery school also because he was really curious about healing and wanted to understand. And he was in a skiing, uh, injured his knee in the skiing accident and he did the big three. So he ripped it really, um, did mm. the ACL and, you know, they, it's kind of a, a common injury, but it's like, and they're like, well, you're going to be like two year rehabilitation, multiple surgeries. Because mm -hmm. like he ripped it majorly, and he was a very physically active person. So of course he got on the phone, and we didn't live in the same city. Mm -hmm. So he got on the phone with me because he he had seen it for himself. The demonstration. He's like, I have surgery on this date. You can you come in and do um, esophagus gray and etheric reconstruction on me before the surgery, and then can you then fly back and come and do it after the surgery and do a mm -hmm. couple series? And I'm like, absolutely, because. He had had me work on his son who had injured his um, shoulder, separated mm. his shoulder in soccer mm, and so had to get surgery. And so I came in and worked on his son right after he had surgery and he didn't have to take any pain meds. He stopped taking pain meds. And it, I, I worked on him the day after the surgery. He didn't take any pain meds from that moment on. He was able to move his shoulder and he was already testing and it was solid weeks and weeks and weeks ahead of when they say he could come back, but they still made him wait six weeks because mm -hmm. they were afraid of their own liability. But he's like, I'm fine. I'm not even taking pain meds. I can do this and all that. And his right. dad was so impressed by that. But he says, can you come and help me? So I did. Right. I went in. I did according, you know, because of the the training that I had had. And like you said, the keys, they were open to me. And I did in Safa Gray and a Theric Reconstruction and before surgery to deal with the, the tears, the tears that were happening, not only mm -hmm. physical. I didn't, you know, in this work, we work with the energy layers, but what is manifested in physical mm -hmm. is also evident in the layers. So I repaired all the layers. Mm -hmm. So then he went into surgery, which also made him feel less pain, right? So then he went right. into surgery. And then he, after surgery, then, of course, because they're physically cutting on him. So there's more repair work to be done. And yeah. we also healed anything connected to that in the energy energetic layers because mm -hmm. thoughts manifest as things. So was there right. a weakness in his field? Was there a thought he had about himself of all that? So we, we did all of that. I did two more rounds of sessions on him. He was fully, he was um, up and way, way, way ahead. He was fully recovered in six months, but he was actually, 
he said it was earlier than that. They actually signed off in six months, the bill of health, that he could do anything actively that he wanted. But he wow. says he was already up and walking around really fast. And he says they just kept telling him, we don't know what's happened with you, but it's like a miracle. Yeah. He says that your knee, because he was, he was going around when he was supposed to be bedridden for months and months and months. And so yeah. he was like, this is where this is how tangible this stuff is right even more so than than other things this like what if my here's my i always have a vision of what could be possible right mm -hmm. and modern medicine so grateful you break a bone i want to if you need surgery i want i want to have that and right so grateful for all that and what alongside of that in the same buildings we had places where people were flowing in sophic reiki to patients all mm -hmm. the time free post what if we had also an etheric surgery that people went through with surgery? What if there was a diagnosis of the whole self, mm -hmm. spirit, soul, and body of anything that's wrong? Right. And this is what, it, that's the vision that I want to see our world move into, right? right? How fast can we be healing the things that are happening? And what, what, what is possible for us when we're not dealing with so much distortion, yeah. right? When we're whole and we're healed, we've healed ourselves. Yeah. What can we create? Yeah. I mean, there's so many implications there too for as the planet becomes a, a place of more <clears throat> light and less stress and people living in ways that are um, just filled with deeper understanding of oneself yeah. that are filled with physical health and fitness, uh, nutritional health, uh, energetic, spiritual health, like, you know, humans, in, in according to many different spiritual teachings and what I've heard in the mystery school as well, these bodies are designed supposedly to live for hundreds of years mm -hmm. that we live in. So there's huge implications in terms of as people shift consciousness, like, you know, I know it's been said now for over, I think the research has been supporting this for over 30 years now, but um, definitely for the last 20 years, there's been tons of research on this. You know, stress is the number one killer. Mm -hmm. And that's not like a metaphorical statement anymore. There hasn't been a metaphorical statement for at least the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. And like all like doctors agree on that and it's published and so like hundreds of like articles and dozens of New York Times bestselling books are all saying like, hey, mm -hmm. yeah, stress is the number one killer. Like people die more from stress, more doctor's visits are related to stress. Something like 95% of doctor's visits, according to doctor's own estimates and studies have been done, could be reduced or eliminated if the person was dealing with their stress in a better way. Yeah. So would we live a hundred years longer if the planet was 50% less stressed? Mm. What would that even look like? Right. Well, right. like what, what does a, what does the planet look like with 50% less stress? <laughs> I mean, there's the external stressors, but then there's all the internal reactions we have to those stressors mm -hmm. and how mm -hmm. we deal with that. And we, aren't going to fix the external stressors if we don't fix the internal stressors mm -hmm. like that yeah. the as within so without as above so below mm -hmm. it doesn't work from the outside in no it's not like well i'm gonna fix you in my relationship and then i'm gonna get to feel better right that's a that's a false split that doesn't really work it doesn't to really work to the fix the political system and then be like well i'm less stressed because i have a better political system that doesn't, that doesn't work. No, we're going to fix the political system because everyone is a lot less stressed and everyone is fighting a lot less with themselves. And then they fight a lot less with their neighbors. And then there's less polarization and dichotomy in, in the world, less duality, less splitting happening. And then we can come together and we can have a better political dialogue. But not the other way around. Mm -hmm. I'm going to fix it in me so that the world can change. I'm not going to wait for the world to change and hope that I feel better. Mm -hmm. Hermetics so, teaches us you cannot give what you do not have, right? right? So if you don't have peace within, if you don't have wholeness within and love and health, how can you how can you change the world then for that in that way? Yeah. You can't. You won't. So you can't, all, you won't. Mm -hmm. yeah. so this is this is why we do what the work that we do and yeah. why we are the healers that we are and have taken that in order to again be better healing ourselves first, right? You and I have uh, gone yeah. through all of the modalities that we do for others multiple times usually. And I have gone through multiple receiving of those for myself so I can understand that and yeah. heal myself. So then I can share it with others. 
So I recognize, oh, you're going through this. I know I recognize that because I went through that. Okay, great. Let's yeah. do this. This was really effective for me. Right. Let me share that with you. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, we're in an hour and a half here. I, I could know. keep talking, but I think we both have other things that we have to do with the rest of our day. So yeah, thank you so much awesome. for being on this podcast with me, Kayla. It's just been oh, so fun. Yeah, and hopefully yeah. we'll do this again sometime. Um, okay, great. Whether we're talking about yeah. healing or something else. But, yeah. We could we could spend another hour talking about etheric reconstruction. We could spend another oh hour talking about King Solomon modalities in South Gray, like just that. Uh, like we, it yeah, it really is. There's, there's so many there's so many stories. I I, I want to get some more stories about it too. But um, yeah, in the interest of like people actually watching the whole podcast, yeah. I think we should end. So no, we do. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you all for watching. If you tuned in and you made it this far, good for you. Um, there's so many other podcasts that I have on YouTube and you can find some of them on Apple Podcasts. I'm going to be releasing season two on Apple and Google and other podcasting locations over the interwebs. Uh, if you like this, share it. You know, share it. It's easy to share Facebook, YouTube, all that stuff. Um, share it with friends. Tell people about it. You can tweet about it or hashtag Modern Mystery School and um, you know, tag me in it if you want. Jordan Bain. Same with Michaela. Um, we'd love to hear from you. So thanks for watching. We love you. And we'll talk more about healing next week. Take care.